Musk setup video. If I'm not wrong, 26th of June 2022 is when I first posted my death setup. And even though I'd been part of the death setup movement for almost two years up until that point, I'd never really shared my death setup, having started from this tiny desk in the corner of my room. From then on, my passion for creating content kept growing and inevitably, my setup went from this tiny desk in the corner of my room to the classic IKEA Lemon countertop with two Alex drawers on the side. Then my first makeover gave back to this and most recently, this iteration and to be honest, I'm so grateful how I've come thanks to you guys. This is a space I enjoy being in and the amount of hours I've spent in here to continuously give you guys the best content and build the channel is just insane. I love tech, design, productivity, and as a ripple effect, I created a space that will enable me to be of value to you, inspire you, all the while being entertaining. People of the internet, let's go for a tour of my desk setup. Okay, just to bring you up to speed, for those who are new here, majority of the accessories I've had for a while now, and I can share the pros and cons in case you want to grab yourself any of the items. In terms of layout, it stayed the same for the most part minus the changes I made during my home office makeover. Speaking of the makeover, the first change I made was adding acoustic wall and slab panels and not only did they elevate the overall aesthetic of my desk area, but also provided some sound treatment to the home office and with the wall behind the desk also covered with the same panels, it's eerily close to an audiophile stream. While on the subject of the slab panels, I also mounted the nano lift elements which take the aesthetics a notch higher whether I have them on or off. Moving down to the desk, the layout remains the same but I've got a bunch of new accessories and peripherals which we'll get into in just a bit. Kicking off with my monitor of choice, the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 and boy has it been rock solid. I've had it for almost 2 years now and ever since I switched from my 21 inch iMac, I don't think I'll ever go back to a normal size monitor and for few good reasons. The most obvious being the massive screen wheeler set which comes in clutch when I'm not only editing but also doing research for my video scripts. I can have up to 6 windows open but my sweet spot has always been 3 with Microsoft Word in the middle and the reference windows on either side. When it comes to the display, it may not be as sharp as the iMac I switched from but it still cuts it for me given that I don't do any professional work that needs super accurate colors. I've also enjoyed using the picture in picture mode whenever I decide to connect my PlayStation and now that I plan to add a PC to the setup, it's going to be super ideal. As for the brightness, it does dial in at an impressive 2000 nit which comes in handy when consuming content, the only caveat being it's limited to HDR content so when I'm on SDR content which to be honest is majority of the time, I get about 600 nits of peak brightness. From an ergonomic standpoint, it's 1000 hour curvature matches the field of view of the human eye which allows for a comfortable viewing experience whilst using the monitor. As for the monitor arm, I'm rocking the Agatron HX monitor arm and it's one of the best when it comes to arms that can support super ultra. If you'd ask me, I'd highly recommend getting one as it not only creates space on your desk setup by reducing visual clutter, but also adds the much needed ergonomics by allowing different configurations whether you want to swivel it to the left or right, further back or closer to your face. Something to note though, it's quite pricey and at 400 Australian dollars, it sits at the premium budget end of the market. Talking of sitting, my government desk shelf sits underneath the monitor and I usually switch it up with my other desk shelf depending on what I'm feeling. As for its use case, it not only adds visual structure to the setup but also acts as a cable management solution, hiding all the cables coming from my peripherals and storage for my Mac Mini and other office items. Speaking of my M1 Mac Mini, it remains the driving force of my setup and comes with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage and even after 2 years it hasn't shown any signs of powering, although the dreaded wheel of death keeps popping up occasionally. And this has made me put the Mark Studio in my sights and a refurbished M1 Max would hold me down for the next couple of years. When it comes to my second rework station, I'm using a refurbished M1 MacBook Pro and it's still holding strong. Just like the M1 Mac Mini, it makes light work of anything I forward it from editing photos in Lightroom Classic to 4K edits pretty much anywhere I decide to work for. Up next is the sound and audio of the setup and I'm still rocking the Kanto YU2s and they work perfectly fine putting in mind they've been around for a while now. They come in clutch when editing my videos thanks to the good quality sound they produce.
My only gripe with them is they don't pack that much bass and that's why when I want to dial in the frequencies, my AirPod Max come to the rescue. Having stayed in the back banner of Apple's releases, they're definitely due for a refresh and it would be nice to see them jump on the USB-C train. As for the audio, the 40mm drivers have been a big proponent in delivering excellent quality sound from the deep punchy bass, well-balanced mix, incredibly crisp highs, all the while keeping distortion at bay. This has helped me nail down my audio and ensure you guys get the best quality audio when I post the videos. Speaking of nailing down the audio, I upgraded my mic to the Blue Baby Bottle SL, a pressure gradient cardio condenser mic that delivers classic sound, incredible versatility, and my recordings sound way better. Talking of making things better, I also swapped my cheap mic boom arm for the Elgato Wave mic arm and tell you what, my back feels a lot better when recording cause in the past I had to lean in so much into the Blue Yeti when recording. Don't get me wrong, my Blue Yeti worked perfectly fine but the Blue Baby Bottle SL is definitely a step up. I've been able to get a rich present midrange, smooth top end and a neutral bottom that reminds me the Blue Baby Bottle SL is one of the world's finest vintage microphones featuring a high pass through filter and a negative 20 decibel pad which all come to life thanks to my audio interface the Audion Evo 4. It not only looks good but has great functionality. It's super easy to interact with since the middle dial pretty much controls everything. For instance, if you want to control the gain of either of the microphone inputs, you simply press the input you want and rotate the dial. For the gamers out there, you can control the mix between your own microphone audio and your in-game audio by simply pressing the mix button and rotating the dial either side to accomplish 100% mic input or 100% in-game audio in order to control your voice reference and mix it with the game. For those wondering what the green button does, it delivers smart function in case you automatically wish to calibrate your output at decibels when talking into the mic. Even though it's quite handy when it comes to gaming, for the most part, I use it to record my voiceovers and for my Zoom meeting audio. Since you guys mean so much to me, here's a bonus tip for the best output. Simply set your mic volume between negative 12 decibels and negative 9 decibels. Moving along, next in line is my Steampunk keyboard which I like to call the control center and just looking at it, it sells those vibes. While it's definitely my favorite, I usually switch it up with the Logitech MX Keys S combo which comes in with loads of functionality and for an in-depth look at it, I'll leave a link of the review in the description box below. Going back to the Steampunk keyboard, it continues to get eyeballs and judging from your comments, you guys really like it and you're definitely not alone. My fingers perfectly fit in the divot on the rounded keycaps, allowing me to type comfortably and with Otemu blue switches underneath the keycaps, that satisfying feeling of the clicks never gets old. Design-wise, a retro masterpiece infused with modern tech that perfectly bends with the rest of my setup and it doesn't stop there. When it comes to ergonomics, its removable wrist has come in clutch during those long working hours and being so big into health and fitness, I can't be any happier. Next to the keyboard, I've got the Logitech MX Master 3 years and once again, just like the keyboard, I like switching it up with my Steampunk mouse but ergonomic wise, the MX Master 3 years is miles ahead and I like how my palm perfectly rests on it, not to mention the great battery life and limitless customization through the Logi Option Plus. I've also used the MX Master 3 and even though the differences are not that significant, the 3 years has an 8000 dpi up from 4000 dpi in the 3, quieter clicks and better tracking which can work on glass. So if you're still rocking the MX Master 3, there's no need to upgrade. Next up is the Capri 2.0 Restress, which works in tandem with the MX Master 3S for the perfect ergonomic setup. To provide visual structure, I've got the Goldman mouse pad and this felt desk mat from Minimal Desk and that ties in everything. Now, with everything so digitalized, most people tend to use their phones or tablets to jot down notes, but having grown up before the smartphone era blew up, I'm one of those people who still believes nothing beats good old pen and paper, hence the reason why I've got these task and time cards I use to outline my daily tasks and my notebook for scripting my reels and other notes, but not on all occasions do I use my erasable pen. Sometimes my grow bed pencils enter the frame and once I'm done, I put them back in the pencil kit which perfectly matches with the aesthetic of my setup. The fact that it also comes with an integrated sharpening kit ensures that when the graphite wears out, I can easily sharpen it and get it ready for the next use. 
When it comes to juicing up my devices, I've got a few accessories that help me in that area, starting with this 100 watt can charger from U3. It comes with three USB-C ports and one USB-A port with USB port C1 and C2, delivering up to 45 watts of fast charging. And when it gets too hot, the dynamic temperature sensors kick in together with the integrated PMW chip that adjusts power outputs to safeguard your devices. So when you're charging four devices at a go, you won't have to worry about your charger overheating. But for those with iPhones, any charger dishing out more than 20 watts will heat up your phone, just like when you use a MagSafe charger like this one, mounted on the Grovement MagSafe door. Good thing though, iPhones have an integrated thermal management system that holds charging till your phone cools down. In saying that, it's still annoying, especially when you're low on juice and need a really quick boost. Hopefully, in the not so distant future, phones can develop technologies to cope with overheating. Speaking of overheating, it's not bad in all scenarios as it helps me heat up my coffee in the Ember Mug through this charger when it runs cold, and the fact that it's got a locked in temperature of 57 degrees, I don't have to worry about it running cold as long as it's got charged. It's quite handy, isn't it? Talking of being handy, the Insta360 Link is the perfect definition of that, especially when paired with my Elgato Keylight that I added to the setup not too long ago. Having had the Insta360 only, on some occasions the lighting didn't quite cut it and when you add the horrible background I had, I had to take my zoom meetings in the living area to make use of the beautiful backdrop my TV wall provides, but after doing my home office makeover, adding the Elgato Keylight and a proper background, all my zoom meetings are now held in the office. As for functionality, it packs loads of amazing features like face striking, zoom in and out all by use of hand gestures and my zoom calls have been next level leaving everyone wondering what camera I use and that's not all. Thanks to its AI capabilities, I'm able to explain things on my whiteboard with so much ease. If you'd like a deep dive into it, I'll leave a link of the review in the description box. With all the peripherals and accessories out of the way, let's talk about what's holding everything together and that's the desk. I'm currently using the Desky Dual Seat Stand Desk and having switched from the IKEA Calbi, the extra desk space makes a lot of difference coming in at 200cm long and 75cm deep compared to 186cm long and 60cm deep of the Calbi. The extra space comes in handy when jotting down my notes, doing some unboxings and I'm already liking the character being added by the scratches and scuffs. Resting on a steel frame, it's supported by two robust legs which are ergonomically designed to provide a high range for most users by using the optimized control module Desky sent out to me a few weeks ago. Unlike the usual controllers you see everywhere, this newly optimized controller is packed with lots of amazing features and whether you want to control it manually on the module, through the app on your phone, or Siri just like this. Hey Siri, Desky app. you'll be spoiled for choice, and it doesn't stop there. The LED light on the control module adds some ambient light to your setup, and most important of all, it works like a charm controlling the robust motorized legs whenever you decide to work while standing. While on the subject of standing, I've got two IKEA Alex drawers standing on either side of the desk, and they provide lots of storage for the setup. Inside each drawer, I've got IKEA drawer organizers to ensure everything stays neat and visually appealing. Speaking of which, planted a few decor pieces always work the magic when it comes to adding visual appeal to your setup. Case in point, I've got the classic IKEA ones on the left side of the desk, then another IKEA favorite, the bamboo plant, and a few cascading ones on the shelves above the desk. As for the decor, my vintage telephone and radio are holding the port strong, and the levitating succulent I'm trying to grow can't be forgotten as well. When it comes to lighting, I've already mentioned a few like the Elgato Keylight which has been a game changer when it comes to zoom meetings. I like how it's easy to control using the app on my computer and the ability to choose warm or cool tones adds to its use case depending on how I want to light myself. Speaking of warm and cool tones, the BenQ screen by Halo also adds that to the cockpit of my setup and it doesn't stop at that. Thanks to its asymmetric light pattern, it minimizes glare on the screen which protects my eyes when walking late at night. I've also enjoyed controlling it using its wireless controller whether it's the light at the front or the back, although the one at the back doesn't light up the back wall as good as my Gobi Flow Plus which I can either control using this control dial or my phone and if you know a thing or two about lighting, 
creates proper separation between the monitor and the background. Talking of creating separation in the background, I switched my troublesome Meros LED lights with the Gobi ones and since then I haven't experienced any issues. My only gripe with the Gobi accessories, only a few of them are compatible with Google Assistant and unless you use a smart light, your only way to control is using the Gobi app. With that said, I've got a good batch of them around the office and together with my other office lights, they create the perfect light ensemble for that cozy inviting feeling. To finish up the desk setup, I've got my trusty office Eames chair and most of you still keep asking me questions about it. It gives me all the adjustable options I need, whether it's the height, leaning back or swiveling, I've got them all depending on what I feel like. As for ergonomics, the features I just mentioned play into that and when you add the comfort aspect, I'm still sold for the next couple of years. When it comes to aesthetics, although not the most important aspect when looking for an office chair, I like how this one perfectly blends with the theme of my setup, with the wallet and black on the chair being referenced across my desk and home office. A phrase you've heard me say a million times, repetition creates rhythm. Well, that sums up my desk setup tour and I'm really grateful how far the setup has come. This is an expression of who I am and what my interests are. Tech, design and productivity all infused together to create this amazing space. I hope this video inspires you and gives you some ideas on how to design your ideal setup. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. Here's another video that you'll enjoy. Till then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.